I want to tell a little story that very few people actually know how we got to America. Because it was a process which was very strange. In 1975, we got um, some information that people started to leave Russia. And my parents, being adventurous artists, they thought, well, why don't we go too? But the news from the immigrants wasn't all that great. Uh, we got letters uh, from America that America is not accepting anyone without English, English language. Some doctors, lawyers, teachers, Russians came to America and they had to switch professions. So they started making money the old fashioned way money laundering, <laughs> loan sharking, uh, and of course, insurance fraud. <laughs> So, so but my parents were, you know, artists, and uh, they said, why don't we try? Well, at that time, if you try to become an immigrant and you get denied, you become unemployable and broke. So they literally went for broke, and they had to rely on me to type up mountains of documents because we were resigning from Soviet Union, we're betraying Mother Russia, though I only had one mother, I thought. It was so difficult to prepare for that immigration because in Soviet times, even the whiteout was in red. So it was really, really, we applied. And then we kind of looked at each other and we thought, well, we're not actually Jewish because the immigration was largely Jewish. Russians were allowed to go to Israel. We didn't know anyone in Israel. And Andrea and I were like, well, I guess we're Jewish enough. My mom. I mean, if anybody checks, they're going to check from, from the waist up. Uh, so, finally, finally, we get the news that yes, we are allowed to leave. And with six bags and official amount of money that a Russian can take with them to the West was $240. We left Russia with six bags and $240. We left Indiana and these wonderful people appear out of nowhere. And they say, where do you want to go? And for a Russian at that time to hear that kind of a question, we looked at each other, New York? <laughs> yeah, let's go to New York. Somebody in the US Embassy in Vienna uh, heard there was a ballet teacher amongst recent immigrants and immediately they came, they found us, they met us, and asked if Krabby would teach a private class to one of the kids. I thought, this capitalism stuff works. <laughs> uh, you know? And he taught literally for two weeks that we were there. They introduced us to new food, American high school. I, I started to learn how to count because none of us spoke any English at the time. I realized immediately that I will have to learn English as soon as possible. But on we go to Rome because the next stage of the immigration is to go to Rome. And we don't know how long we're going to be there, but again, wonderful people, we don't know who they are. They take care of us, they give us money to survive. We live in a communal apartment, which is very Soviet, so they wanted the transition to be gradual. <laughs> uh, and somebody said that, uh, you know, there's a school, private school nearby, and would you like to come and maybe teach a class? Everywhere he went. He was asked to teach class. And I knew nothing about ballet. Well, growing up in Russia, we had Spartacus <laughs> and Swan Lake. And I thought both could be fixed with a soccer ball. Um, so, but he was teaching, he was working. And my mom started working the camera show because she was a juggler. So we're living a life, you know, we just got out of Russia. Everybody's working, I'm learning English. And we realize we're, it's getting a little long. We're not going to New York anytime soon. So finally, they asked us for an interview at the American uh, Embassy in Rome, and we go in. Mom and I are sitting. Andre is in there, and because he was a member of the Communist Party, like everyone at the Bolshoi, so don't judge him. Uh, there's an interview. We're sitting, waiting, and there is screaming. There is laughter. There is stuff going on. I'm thinking, they better have a translator. Because I, I can't imagine what's going on in there, because his English, you know. He comes out, he smiles, the, the ambassador walks out, he hits him in the back, we leave, and I'm like, what, what did you do? What happened in there? And he said, well, he asked me how I'm going to teach in America, because I want to teach ballet. I said, what did you do? He said, I did the double tour to the knee. <laughs> 
Within a week, we were on our way to New York. So six months later, Moscow, Vienna, Rome, we land in Sunnyside, Queens. Not America. It's Queens. Uh, no skyscrapers, no sirens, just furniture stores, health food restaurants like McDonald's. So <laughs> uh, we don't know where America is. We don't know what to do next. Our friends were kind enough to put us up for a few days. Somebody says, well, why don't you make some rounds, go to schools? Uh, so we went to Harvard and met a wonderful gentleman, David Howe. We're watching his class in pink jazz pants, <laughs> also with bell bottoms, and he does a devil of it to the front. I said, that's pretty incredible. He says, incredible. I've never seen a Russian ballerina do a devil of it to the front like this man. And I said, is that good? He said, that's fantastic. And he was wonderful. He said, if you'd like to teach, we'd love to have you. Then somebody said, why don't you start my school American ballet? He comes in, very, everybody's very polite. The directors at the time, one of them, uh, said, we don't have anything right now, but maybe you need a substitute, we'll let you know. So off we go to Queens, not America. <laughs> well, the phone call came a couple days later, that Mr. Balanchine would like to see your class. Because we heard of Balanchine, but he's only been in Russia like a couple of times. Uh, my dad never met him. The night before he was supposed to teach the class, his father passes away in the last night. Grammy goes for a walk in the middle of the night. And mom and I were just sitting there. Where's he going to go? He, you, know, he can't, you know, he can't be alone. He comes back. I said, what are you going to do? He said, what do you mean? I'm going to teach a class. He teaches a class. Mr. B comes in. Last 15 minutes, maybe, stays for maybe two minutes. Uh, he, then he leaves before the class ended. And I'm sitting there, I understand the importance of it, and uh, I'm like, oh no, he left. <laughs> What's going to happen? And then I just wait for him after class, and he comes out. He says, well, let's go home. I said, what did he say? And he couldn't tell me. So we're walking um, on the street, and so he told me that he's been waiting for me for 40 years. That was unbelievable. That day, he started working at SMB. And when he said to Mr. B, but I don't speak English, he said, my dear, I can only help you. <laughs> and he was so right. <laughs> You know, his methodology wasn't necessarily Bolshoi. It was simple. Dance as hard as you can, be honest, work to correct your deficiencies, and enjoy. He never made any student feel bad. He played no head games. He never argued with the pianist. Not one of his students had any disorder <laughs> uh, or low self-esteem. He loved all of us. He truly did. And he did it passionately and sincerely. He is everyone's favorite stepdad. We all love to be in the same room with him because he never disappointed. And every second of every class, he never forgot just how miraculous our journey to America has been. We're so lucky that we had him. And he's here now. Thank you.